Having discussed the circle of Willis, let's talk about the strokes, aneurysms, and high yield points when it comes to the cerebral circulation. ACA strokes are going to be the most simple. They're going to just be isolated contralateral leg weaknesses. Next, we have MCA. MCA strokes are going to be quite extensive, so we're going to describe all of the potential symptoms that these present with. You have motor weakness of the contralateral arm, along with, I'm going to misspell it here, but sensory weakness of the contralateral arm, along with aphasia. And the type of aphasia is going to depend based on what area um, of the MCA is infarcted. Lastly, if we have non-dominant MCA, we're going to have neglect, and this is due to lesions of the parietal lobe. We'll talk a little bit more about MCA towards the end of this video. Next, we're going to have PCA strokes, and PCA strokes are always going to be visual deficits, and this is due to the occipital lobe. The most common sort of high-yield tested visual deficit is homonymous hemianopsia. Homonymous meaning it's the same, hemi as in half, anopsia as in loss of visual field. Now we can talk a little bit more about ACOM and PCOM. ACOM is going to be the number one site for aneurysms. And common things that give us aneurysms are going to be ADPKD or autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease or Marfan's and other um, connective tissue disorders that increase the likelihood of aneurysmal formation. PCOM is actually a pretty high yield aneurysm. It's not the most common. However, it's the only thing that gives us an isolated cranial nerve 3 palsy along with a blown pupil. That's basically a permanently fixed dilated pupil due to cranial nerve 3 uh, issues. A few other high yield topics in the cerebral circulation that we can go over uh, is going to be all related to the MCA. So once again, MCA is going to be your number one sort of infarct uh, um, stroke. And the most common symptoms we've already discussed, which involve the arm and aphasia. However, there's also this high yield syndrome called Gerstmann syndrome. And um, I'm just mispronouncing that. That's Gerstmann syndrome. And Gerstmann syndrome has a graphia, which is the inability to write, a calculia, which is the inability to calculate, and finger agnosia. And finger agnosia is basically the inability to tell apart your fingers. And lastly, if you remind ourselves of the Meyer loop, which is optic radiations through the parietal and temporal lobe, uh, basically if we have this sort of projection between uh, parietal, so the outer one will be our temporal lobe, and the inner one will be the parietal lobe, the MCA actually feeds these two lobes as well. So if you have a temporal lobe knockout, that is what will give us our pi in the sky, which is going to be contralateral superior quadrantinopia. And if you have a parietal lesion, uh, so again, this is still the MCA, this will give us our pi on the floor, which is contralateral inferior quadrantinopia.